Hello and welcome to the Tri-City Herald editorial board with Secretary of State Steve Hobbs and challenger Julie Anderson. I'm Cecily Rexis and I'm the editorial page editor for the Tri-City Herald. And joining me today, I have Matt Taylor. He is the retired editorial page editor. And I've got Ken Robertson. He is the retired executive editor for the Herald. And then Julie, uh, Lori Williams is our executive editor. And Mike Paoli is a community representative for us. So so anyway, so I'll let you each have two minutes for an opening. I don't like to talk over people. So um, if uh, you start to go over, I'm just going to give you a hand wave, OK? And that means you can finish your thought. We won't be that hardcore about it, but just finish up your thoughts so we can move on. And we'll probably get to whatever you were saying, you know, later in the sure, sure, sure. in the day. So, so okay, Mr. Hobbs, let me yeah. get this. Um, well, so. thanks. Uh, I've dedicated my life to public service, starting from enlisting in the Army at age 17, to my current position in the Army National Guard as Lieutenant Colonel. During these 33 years in uniform, I am uniquely suited to defend our elections from cyber threats and misinformation because of my time in the NSA, graduated of the Command General Staff College and my recent graduation from Department of Defense Information School and my current assignment as a public affairs officer. Along with that, I've served 15 years in the state Senate, moving our state forward with bipartisan solutions. And as your current Secretary of State, it's been an honor serving you. Already, this office has ran uh, several elections rather smoothly, two special elections and a statewide primary, working with our 39 counties. In addition, this year we faced three misinformation campaigns and a cyber threat. These have been featured in NPR's All Things Considered, National NBC News. Another January 6th is what we're trying to avoid, and my office is prepared to turn misconceptions of our elections around and fight back on the big lie. I've dedicated myself to working across the aisle to get things done with a proven track record. This history of bipartisanship has earned endorsements of current Democratic and Republican legislators, such as Senators Honeyford, Warnick, King, and Hawkins. Your local Jerome Delvin has endorsed me, as well as organizations such as the Association of Washington's Business and the Washington State Labor Council. In fact, my history of bipartisanship has me working with Representative Matt Banky on cybersecurity issues. As a son as an Asian immigrant and the first person of color in the office, I'm dedicated to removing barriers to the ballot box, underserved communities, and as a father and child with special needs, I want to make sure that their voice is heard as well. And thank goodness we only have 35 days five hours, 56 minutes, and 21 seconds left till the election. Hope I can earn your support. <laughs> Great, thank you. I'm gonna let the timer run out just a second and we'll reset it. You were just a little under, so. I talked faster okay. this time. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, Julie, mm -hmm. whenever you're ready, I'll, I'll start the timer. Hello, my name is Julie Anderson, the nonpartisan candidate for Secretary of State. Raised in a military family, my roots in public service and hard, uh, hard work run really deeply. I have a background in the public and the nonprofit sector in human services, criminal justice, and economic development. But for the past 12, nearly 13 years, I've been serving the public as a Pierce County Auditor. And that means I've been running hundreds of elections, recording public documents and making them accessible to the public, licensing businesses, lots of other things that county auditors do, marriage licensing, passports, you name it. Um, and I'm very proud to say that I uh, have national and state certifications in election administration, and I'm a certified public records officer. I'm running as a, a nonpartisan candidate. Um, because I think that partisan politics have a destructive, distracting element to them. And I don't think that the person who is overseeing elections in Washington state should belong to a political party. And I hope that we get into a discussion about that because we do have a long history through Secretary Reed and Secretary Wyman of governance with a lot of integrity. But times are changing, and um, I'm brave enough to run without a political party. I'm not accepting, soliciting any endorsements from political parties or contributions. That's how strongly I feel about this. And my entire political career has been nonpartisan. Um, I believe that whenever we, I believe that we will have a trustworthy democracy whenever voters feel welcomed to participate when they know how to participate and can do so easily, and when they trust that the election results are fair and secure. Um, 
looking forward to the conversation. I have received the endorsements and support of over 40 um, election officials across the state. Great, thank you very much. So let's talk about party labels. Uh, you brought it up. It seems to be a, a real big talking point in this particular race. So I'm gonna let um, Steve address, because you opened the door, I'll let him uh, respond and then we'll go back to you. Okay, Julie. So Steve, what do you, what do you think about um, her assertion that the um, Secretary of State office should be nonpartisan? Well, as I, as I told her, everyone it doesn't matter to me whether it's nonpartisan or partisan i can work under any environment i have a history of working across the aisle in a bipartisan manner we've had three previous uh, secretaries of state that were partisan I, th I think really it's about the person uh not the label anyway uh you know i i i was uh when i was in the senate i was chair of a committee when the republicans were in charge i have republican who have endorsed me i've uh, brought folks together um, really, it's about just trust and how you operate. You know, in the military, we used to have the saying, deeds, not words. You know, look at the deeds that I've done the past 15 years, and, and you'll know, notice that I do work across the aisle and have the trust of uh, uh, both Republicans and Democrats. All right, Julie, you can expand on your thoughts. Go ahead. Oh. Sure. Well, you may have noticed that um, the United States and Washington state have been experiencing hyperpolarization. Our politics are getting more extreme. Um, and it's not so much about the person in the office uh, as it is the label that they carry. No, well, that didn't quite come out right. But um, the I, I'm running without a political party specifically because parties are designed to compete with each other. And in fact, in campaigns and in elections, they're designed and their duty is to defeat the other team. So running with a party label doesn't make sense to me. I just gave a presentation to fifth graders the other day and you should have seen their delightful little faces whenever I talked about the umpire at home plate wearing the team of one of the, uh, wearing the jersey of one of the teams in playing. It just didn't make sense to them. And I do think that our hyperpolarization is going to get worse before it gets better. And the misinformation and disinformation that we're all very concerned about, it is concerning, bad facts out there, but bad facts are made worse by political parties fighting each other and amplifying um, those extreme messages. So I wanna take that drama out of the office by not applying it to me. And I look forward to having my deeds and actions um, earn the trust of voters as they have in Pierce County, um, where I've been overwhelmingly reelected for three terms as a nonpartisan Pierce County auditor. I know that this system works and my political parties and citizens really appreciate having a nonpartisan election administrator. Uh, Steve, what changes have you made since you took over the office? And then Julie will ask you what changes you foresee if you, you're elected. So. Right. So, so one of the things we did is resubmitted the uh, budget. There was a budget that was submitted under Kim Wyman, but we resubmitted it because of uh, increased threats to cybersecurity and misinformation. So we doubled the size of our cybersecurity. We reached out to the Air National Guard, who does our cybersecurity defense, um, and we're going to strengthen those relationships. We're going to come up with um, an exercise next year, better than a tabletop exercise, but more interactive. Uh, also, we're, we've created a uh, division of outreach and voter education. This both combats misinformation, but also uh, reaches out to disenfranchised communities, communities that are underserved. Uh, we're, we are going to start hiring people right now where we have people, it's called the Trusted Messenger Program, which is identical to what's happening in, in King County, where we're hiring people who, who know the language of the community, you know the culture of the community. We're also going to develop relationships with certain organizations, like I talked to the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce out there and tried to develop a close uh, relationship. I'm going to be coming out there on uh, October the 18th as well. Uh, also, we're doing stuff with our libraries. Uh, we're actually going into our juvenile uh, detention facilities, which is really exciting. We're hiring up in our library so we can do rehabilitation uh, um, of the incarcerated, which is something that we really haven't done. It's more just checking out books. So really excited about that. And we are going to do our satellite programs of corporations and nonprofits. So there's a face-to-face -face interaction rather than driving all the way to Olympia to, uh, to, to get your problem solved. And so very excited about that. 
Uh, we, mo we moved Boat Wa, uh, a hard database, into a cloud backup system. So now we have a cloud, or we're going to have a cloud backup here in a couple months. And we're looking at uh, text messaging out to the voters. That's We're still looking at the security because that's a very important part of uh, any time you roll out a new program. So, yeah, no, we're very excited about the stuff we're doing, and we got more uh, more to do. Um, including helping out our 39 counties, trying to get grants for them uh, and, and money because some of these counties, especially in your neck of the wood, maybe have like two or three people and that's about it. And uh, they, sometimes their commissioners are not forthcoming with the resources they need. And hopefully we can help those county auditors out. Great. Okay, Julie, uh, if elected, what changes do you foresee that you would implement? Well, they come in three areas. One is in uh, expanding access to democracy. The other is transparency and security in our elections. Um, and then I already spoke about um, nonpartisanship, but let's go ahead and, and take it from there. Um, nonpartisanship. Uh, it's more than just the political parties that are interested in the integrity of the elections and have a vested interest in making sure that they are top notch and transparent. So I'm going to be working with the legislature to stand up a nonpartisan observer corps um, that right now uh, political party uh, election observation is limited to the two political parties um, by statute and only for ballot processing. Elections is so much more than that. It involves voter registration, um, auditing, all the way through to certification. There's a lot of pieces to watch. Um, and I'm not talking about an Arizona forensic style audit, don't get me wrong. I'm talking about subject matter experts. For example, students in community and technical colleges or four-year colleges who are studying cybersecurity, accountants, attorneys, um, and people that uh, really have um, a lot to offer and a lot to learn. So that's one example in nonpartisanship. For access to democracy, I really want to replicate exciting programs like we've done in Pierce County, where I've pioneered having all 27 of our library branches become in-person points of assistance on election day. That has saved our, uh, our citizens in Pierce County an average of 14 miles if on election day they're stuck because you still have to register in person on election day. They don't have to travel to the election center. They can either get registered, they can get a replacement ballot if their dog ate it, and then they can vote in private and drop it in a secure drop box at 27 locations. This was scaled up and out um, in partnership with libraries. We could have up to 300 locations in Washington state without having to reinvent the wheel. Um, I could go on with many other examples, and I've got lots of examples on my website. <laughs> okay. I'm going to see if there's any other questions from um, my fellow board members. Anyone else? I'd make a comment if I could. Okay. I, I could, can you hear me? Yes. Sure. All right. I, when I came out here 35 years ago and to, to live, I've been here before in Fort Lewis. Uh, I was given to understand by most of the people that I would meet on the street that the Secretary of State of Washington would be a Republican and would always be a Republican, and it was written in the Constitution that that's what that's just the way it's going to be. And now here's the two of you messing with all of that, and I just uh, I just wanted to draw to your attention that it, we're watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Matt. Okay, Ken, you had a question. Well. Uh, in a way, it's kind of related. Uh, uh, on this side of the state, at least, and I won't speak for the west side, there are a substantial number of people who believe that uh, the job that Steve is doing and the job that Julie wants to do um, is absolutely just continue the destruction of our system for managing ballot security i'll use that in quotes and um i'm wondering how the two of you are going to reach out to those people because they are so adamant that washington system can't be trusted and i mean i'm i'm like matt i've, I've been here 46 years now and I look at things and I think, boy, we've got a great system for managing our voting. 
and our registration and everything. And, and you know, I, uh, yet we have on this side of the state, I would not be surprised 35% of the people or more think that everything is all fouled up. Yeah. So how do you, how do you combat that? Who do, Who do you want to go first? <laughs> yeah. uh, Julie, why don't you go first? Well, um, my approach is, first of all, you don't tell them to shut up and sit down. Um, I make a distinction between um, the entrepreneurs who are pushing bad facts and this narrative for their own notoriety and for fundraising, and I separate them um, from people that just hear some of it and think, hmm, I, I wonder if there's any truth in that. And then they read a newsletter article and then they're convinced. Um, those people, um, I think, have um, a genuine desire to uh, want to make our elections um, better. They think that they're broken. And those are the people that I want to engage with. There is no shortcut here. Um, amping up a social media program where government tells people how elections are run and how good we are. The skeptics aren't subscribing to government channels. <laughs> the skeptics are subscribing to other channels. So there's no shortcut for relationships. Um, and it's going to be just a very labor intensive process. I've had a ton of luck meeting in groups with people. Um, and taking their uh, concerns one at a time without dismissing them offhand and without being defensive. So I want to do more of that. And I want to support the 39 county auditors in doing it as well by standing shoulder to shoulder with them in those small groups. I've also got an idea about uh, forming a very kind of long range bipartisan committee where we can take uh, the um, areas of concern because I'm not ready, I, calling them myths right off the bat is a real turnoff to people. So taking each area of concern and breaking it down and what's what's possible, what's probable, what's the risk, um, and is there anything practical that we can do to tighten it up? So that's my general approach, but you know something, it just takes hard work and it's interpersonal work. Yeah, can you, um... It, you you brought up the number thirty five percent. The King uh, King Five News poll had uh, Washington State thirty five percent of Washingtonians disagreed with uh, the twenty twenty election. So you hit it on the head. Pro you know, I guess we can assume that most of them are probably in your neck of the woods. But I think the good thing is, <laughs> yeah. is that uh, look, this is a long this is a long term process. This is a long range uh, goal of ours to start bending the curve of uh, of um, this view that our elections are somehow uh, have lost their integrity. And really there's three focuses uh, that were or three avenues that we're taking and getting this done. Number one is letting people know about our elections process, because guess what? We've taken it for granted. We've done a really good job of telling people, Hey, don't forget to turn your, your ballot. You got to vote. Um, we, we have not done a good job about, Hey, did you know that, you can go to your 39 counties and check out the voting process because you'd be surprised. There's people out there that don't even know that. You got people running for office in your neck of the woods that, <laughs> that don't even know that. And um, they don't know that every signature is checked. They don't know the security and transparency involved. And we have to talk about it now. We can't just sit idly by and assume that everybody knows what's going on. This means uh, not only telling the story, but also being active about it. And, you know, I'm going out to different communities. I'm going to talk to the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce on October 18th and talk to the 300 members there. Um, I've been going around the state. Uh, we are doing public service announcements. I don't think those are bad things, especially if you're just informing the public. Also, I'm making relationships with those groups that are having the most problems, like my good friends on the other side of the aisle, they're kind of split, but there's some good people to understand. I think you all know Representative Matt Banky. He is a good individual who gets it, who understands working with him, working with Jerome Delvin, working with Curtis King, uh, working with these Republicans to help me and help others in the 39 County Auditors spread the message that guess what? Your vote, it, it, the election system is okay. It's good. You, you don't have to worry about it. 
but that doesn't mean that you don't sit idly by, you know, ask questions. We had the, the voter research project out there going door to door looking for ghost voters. And Mary Hall, bless her heart, she confronted them, say, hey, give me the list. Give me the these list of 2,000 people. And guess what she found out? A lot more overseas voters are college kids. And we got to do more about that. We got to tell that story. The other thing we need to do is educate our young people. Because again, the, this curve of getting people to trust our elections, it's going to take some time. And already I'm, I'm working with the office and with tabletop game companies and with uh, the um, educators about how we can create uh, curriculum and games to inform our young people so that they know about our elections before they become voting age. We're looking at a, at a gaming app, a mobile game app. Now, you probably have either a kid or a grandkid that looks at their phone all the time. Well, they're probably playing games, right? So let's uh, put that good that put that put time to good use about learning civics in our elections. And lastly, you know what? Also, it's about common sense and social media. My God, how many people, I mean, how many people do you know that just simply retweet things and don't even really look who's behind it or accept a friend that they don't even know? Uh, we, we're going to talk about that too. Um, just take a pause, you know, take a minute before you retweet things or share a post because guess what? That person may not be real. That story may not be real. And I will tell you this because having worked in the NSA and having worked in, mili in the military, we have foreign actors whose sole purpose in life is to pepper our citizens with misinformation so that they will pick it up and spin it. And so the best way to solve that is doing what young people do is look with suspicion on any Facebook post, tweet, uh, Instagram, or any of those social media platforms. On, on that note, there are folks uh, in our neck of the woods who want to go back to in-person voting. Do you ever see that happening? Julia, I'll let you take that. Um, part of the positive um, story that we do have to tell is that we have a paper trail that's auditable and secure. And so paper ballots and vote by mail is part of that story. I don't see us um, uh, retreating from vote by mail. I don't think that's wise. Um, and I also think that people who propose that that I talk to, whenever I talk about the weaknesses of polling place voting and the security lapses and opportunities for errors in, in polling place, a lot of them pretty quickly retreat from the idea um, once they understand that. I've presided over polling place elections as well as vote by mail. Pierce County was the last county to transition to vote by mail. So I know what it's like to manage both, which is untenable. And I know what it's like to manage polling place vote, uh, polling place elections. We're much more secure with a paper-based vote by mail system that's auditable, traceable, and can be replicated. Um, and doesn't rely on a workforce or a crew of volunteers um, and getting them all trained up. So I'm definitely against proposals um, to uh, hand, I call them Luddite elections, um, where they want, there's proposals to eliminate all machines in the counting process and um, go entirely to um, place-based 1,000 voters at a time that doesn't make sense. And if you've conducted an election, you know that human error is tremendous. Uh, you can count a thousand ballots uh, using the human eye, but uh, the error rate is pretty significant. The machines that we have, which again are auditable, tested, secure, are much more accurate. Okay, but Steve. I, oh, go ahead. I, will, I will say this. Uh, that's, sure. That is one of the reasons though that I stood up the um, points of assistance program in our libraries. Um, because there, there are people that need last minute help and in-person services um, uh, are, are important. And I think we can expand that, but not at the expense of vote by mail. We also need to be, by the way, developing alternatives to vote by mail for our military and overseas voters and for voters who are living with disabilities. Um, I propose uh, pulling together security um, experts, technologists, and um, stakeholders to figure out what kind of electronic return um, system that we can develop for them in those special situations that's highly secure and ethically developed. Okay, great. Okay, Steve, your turn. Yeah, no, I think you're gonna find Julie and I are in agreement with this. 
Uh, we can't go back the old way. I know Brad Clibbert would love to go back to the old way. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is there's just too many security concerns. Plus, look, the population has increased, right? So it's over four, you know, four million registered voters. And, and what we don't want to have is a situation where you're seeing in the South where there's long lines, right? Because people are trying to scramble to vote on a single day, trying to get time off work. I mean, here, at least you have the luxury of getting your ballot, you know, in the mail, you know, 18 days before the election. You can you take your time. You can research the candidates. Um, you can do all that. And you can't do that uh, under the uh, the polling way of doing things. So uh, it just, this is the way we should do it now. Uh, they're, they're, it's very safe and secure and transparent. Um, and, you know. Julie and I would love to convince Brad Clippert that, uh, you know, going back to the old ways is, is is not the way to go. Okay. Is there anyone else on the board that has a question? Go ahead, Mike. I've, we've heard a lot about how you two are, are aligned in election space and so forth. Um, I'm not seeing any great distinction between you both as candidates. Uh, could you both elaborate? And, and Julie, I'd like you to go first since you're uh, uh, you're the opponent here how do you distinguish yourself from Steve Hobbs again experience there's there's a reason that over 40 uh, former and current election officials are backing me um, because they know the value of hands-on experience um, the other is um, through my work in the community, in the nonprofit and public sectors, and my 12 years as auditor, I've got a lot of practice at partnerships. Um, whereas, uh, you know, I, I think that working in the state legislature and in the military are um, admirable careers. Uh, they tend to be in the legislature transactional and, and political, um, and in the military, uh, very top down and rank and file. Whereas in, in the job of secretary of state, you are managing and trying to develop partnerships and communication with 39 very, very diverse counties that each have many uh, commu unique communities within them. Um, and you have to be able to form partnerships. Um, and the people that are supporting me understand that. They trust me. They have seen me do that in my local community and they've seen me be a leader on the state and national stage in elections um, because it's, uh, it's, it's definitely not top down. It's definitely horizontal and um, relationship based. We also differ on um, the uh, issue of uh, local control and local option. Um, some of the greatest, the greatest some of the greatest um, innovations and um, forward momentum that we've had in this country is because we have allowed experimentation uh, in local government and in states. We wouldn't even have vote by mail if we didn't have local option. Um, we wouldn't have women voting if we didn't have local option. So I do support the local option bill for ranked choice voting because I don't think it's for me to judge or moralize what a community wants to do, as long as it is not discriminatory and as long as it meets the standards of um, election law. That's another reason why I strongly support the Washington State Voting Rights Act, is it provides a filter um, by which any changes to election practices on the local level, you have to make sure and um, affirmatively prove that whatever you're doing um, is not going to harm protected populations. Um, I'm really uh, looking forward to implementing that and working closely with the attorney general and all 39 counties. Thank you. And 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 Steve, we, we heard both of your uh, experience um, spiels at the beginning. Um, Steve, if you would uh, address local option voting rights and and what specific areas do you and your opponent in policy space where do you diverge okay so i guess we'll talk about uh, i'll address your question on uh, local option ranked choice voting not a fan uh, obviously i will do what the locals decide because i have to <laughs> so i will definitely help them and i will work with them because that's the job of the secretary of state but this particular moment in time 
it is hard enough to get people to vote right now under the current system. Also, with ranked choice voting, you're basing it on an algorithm. With the amount of misinformation, disinformation going out there, can you imagine uh, people uh, up in arms about that? It's happening already in Alaska. Now, regardless of the fact that it's, you know, you can't hack into it. There's nothing wrong with the algorithm. Look, you all live in eastern Washington in the Tri-Cities. Do you think they're all going to like ranked choice voting? Heck no. They will definitely not like ranked choice voting, especially when you have a situation when you have, let's say, a close election, right? If you have a close election and there's a recount, it's very simple. Whoever has the most votes wins, right? In a ranked choice voting, you have to deal with the algorithm. You get a count. You get a count under different candidate situations, who's first, who's second, who's third, right? There's a lot of opportunities for misinformation that will go out. Additionally, I am very concerned as a son of an Asian immigrant of people who where English is not their first language. So now you're having them to vote in an election that is completely foreign to them in a different language because not every county has the ability to give out voter guides in the language that they choose. And also, I'm concerned about my son. I have a child with special needs. It is very easy for him to pick the the one that he likes. I just I show him the ballot. I show him the voter guide statement. He probably looks at the pictures more than the words. And then he makes his choice. But guess what? He can do that. That's his right. He's an American citizen. Um, but imagine if it's ranked choice, He's that's going to be next to impossible for him to navigate. I'm really concerned about the disenfranchisement uh, of people of color, the immigrant community, people with disabilities. And right now, at this particular moment, I just don't think it's a good idea to do it. Just So that's my... Oh, I'm sorry. No, I just wanted to provide some context uh, for anyone watching this video, <laughs> this recording, mm -hmm. that this this issue is coming up in in King County, correct? In November, they they mm -hmm. are voting on whether they're going to implement um, Clark, Clark. Uh, well in Clark County too. Oh, Seattle. three county. Oh, okay. I didn't realize how many. So Seattle. Okay. So no. okay. So that's that's why it's it's this is a big big issue. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and finish your thoughts, Stephen. Then we'll let Julie continue because I. Oh because yeah, she yeah, had yeah. something to say too. Sure, no, that, I mean those are the policy considerations. I also agree. Their uh, experience matters because this office has changed. You're dealing with outside threats. I mean, look, we've had a Russian cyber threat that happened. Three misinformation campaigns. We're not sure if they even came from the United States. It might have been outside the United States. You can see all things NPR's all things considered on the story of the Albert sensors that that happened, where it was a misinformation campaign directed at a security device on a cybersecurity device, uh, trying to remove it. And it was successful in one county. And we had to help uh, two to three of our county auditors help them push back on this false narrative. Um, so I've already been doing it in this office. And we have ran two special elections in the statewide election. This is uh, this is different. This is not a this is not a county office. It's a statewide office, which you're doing with a greater scale and you're dealing with larger threats. And you have to navigate in the legislature because guess what? The legislature is the one that passes the budgets. They're the ones that pass the policy. And because I come from that arena, I'm very good at being able to navigate this stuff. This is why I have endorsements by both Republicans and Democrats in, in this arena. And so, and then lastly, just experience about where you come from. I mean, I come, my mom's a... Okay. My mom's an immigrant, so <laughs> right. you know I, I know that community. Right, I come from that community. I'm gonna let Julie talk about ranked voting again because I could t I could see your head was nodding a oh. little bit, and I just want to give well, you a I, chance to. Well, I just I just wanted to say in response to the uh, boogaboo about people in Eastern Washington aren't gonna like ranked choice voting, that then communities won't adopt it. And aren't, and aren't asking for it. That, that was that was my little facial expression. There. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, and I I will say let's let's talk about cybersecurity. Um, not a lot has changed. Um, cybersecurity is something that is ever present in banking, elections, hospital care, you name it. And you have to constantly remain on your toes and vigilant. And we have great partnerships with the federal government, with Homeland Security, the FBI, and all the alph alphabets. 
And when it comes to a zero day vulnerability, they work directly with county auditors and their CISOs to alert us of any kind of patches that happen. I guess one thing that uh, is I would like to emphasize that I would do differently is I'm going to pay a lot more attention to what's happening at the counties regarding cybersecurity. Uh, we we are well protected. Uh, Kim Wyman did a great job of standing up a security office and cementing our partnerships with Homeland Security, but at the county level, where all the desktop computers are managed, where the firewalls are managed, where software patches are applied. There are differing levels of um, resources in those counties. And I would like to audit or at least get an inventory county by county about those county budgets. We're talking outside of elections and really shore those up. I also want to make sure that we have very strong relationships between the election officials and those county CISOs, cyber information security officers. So um, this cybersecurity is not a new thing. It is constantly evolving. We're well protected. We need to continue to be that way, but I am gonna pay more attention to what's happening at the county level um, at the same time maintaining um, the state and federal partnerships. And okay. I was really disappointed that um, the tabletop that Homeland Security, our one opportunity to get ready for the midterm elections, we didn't do it. Washington state didn't participate in tabletop the vote and Homeland Security noticed. We had the lowest participation that we've ever had. And that was our one opportunity to have a uh, real time 39 county federal state tabletop to prepare for the midterms. And now it's upon us. You know, we, we are in okay. the midterms now. Okay, Steve raised his hand. Yeah, what did well, you want to well, say? First of all, we did participate, but a lot of the counties did not participate. Second of all, we're already reach we're already tied to 39 counties because we've had several meetings with 39 counties, including the warning of the six IP addresses that were identified as Russian from US Cyber Command. So we have brought those together. Um, but this is look, the, the good news is is that I care about cybersecurity, Julie cares about cybersecurity. Uh, but we are doing it and we're increasing our capability and working with the 39 counties, including trying to get them the assistance that they need. Um, and look, the tabletop exercise is all fine and dandy, but we, what we really need is a major exercise that actually has a, re, a red team that's doing injects in the closed system and also a white cell that does the evaluation. So we're, I'm developing it right now because we haven't had it and we're already reaching out to our federal partners we're going to reach out to our 39 county counties and we're going to have a real exercise that teaches the system because having going around the room and talking about what we're going to do and what steps is not enough you actually have to exercise the system by putting in actual injects by doing penetration tests and having people react to those and then you do counter reactions and that at the end of the day you do a you know, an AAR after action report, and then you get serious, like, hey, sorry, but you didn't do it right. And these are the reasons why. Now, some people get hurt by that and embarrassed. But the fact of the matter is, this is how we improve and we strengthen our vulnerabilities. Matt had a question, I think. Matt Taylor? You yes, had a question? I, have, I have a comment and a question. The comment is, <clears throat> you guys really screwed up my, my election day for me. I'm uh, I don't know which one of you to pick up. You're very good. You, you, <laughs> you're just doing a super job, both of you, from slightly different points of view. Now, as to the... Here. Huh? I'm oh, sorry. Just like I have people coming to my... Oh, okay. And as uh, the other thing is, you guys both have real style, real experiences, how are you going to deal with the people who are trying to tear our elections apart? You can't be too polite, I would, I would think. But I just, it just, I, I'm, I worry that the basic electoral a, a, a group of electors for America, there, the norm is is in danger. I mean, you could assume you wave an American flag and people are going to, oh boy, get, 
feeling very patriotic. Now, I, hell, I don't know what they're going to what's going to happen. But I just wonder if extremists come after you guys, how can you deal with it? Thank you. Any thoughts on that? Who, who do you want to go first? Go ahead, Steve. You can go first. Sure. I mean, I've done it throughout my life. I mean, I did it in the military in Kosovo and Iraq. In both situations, we dealt with misinformation, violent crowds, um, gunfire. But hopefully that hasn't happened. That won't happen. <laughs> and then cyber threats and misinformation. So, um, no, I'm, I'm experienced at doing it. I've... Um, I, in fact, I was uh, in Southwest Washington on a radio program. They opened up the phone lines, and I had the most uh, interesting conversations with people that uh, uh, think that our elections are rigged, and I calmly addressed every single one. Part of it, Matt's going to be just educating the public on what the process is here in Washington State, because we haven't done it. We really haven't done it. We're going to do more of it. Um, I know Julie will do it. I know she's doing it in Pierce County. I'm going to do it at my level. We are doing it now with the uh, vote with confidence program that we're putting out there. But a lot of it's going to be face to face conversations and uh, general education of the public on how votes are done here in the state of Washington. Um, I would only add that you've we we both have courage. All 39 of our election administrators and their staff have courage. Um, we don't shrink from criticism. Uh, the other thing we do is we don't repeat the lie. Um, we look for those good faith questions and answer those good faith questions and uh, not be defensive and not retreat or shrink from this very challenging time that we're having in our country right now. We, we, can't, we can't retreat and stop interacting with the public. Um, the other thing that I would do is make sure that all, you know, that the tabletop exercise just isn't about cybersecurity. Some of the richest, most worthwhile tabletop exercises that I've engaged in have to do with all kinds of security, including physical security, physical threats, natural disasters, and you. some of the best tabletop exercises have had uh, layering injections where you deal with all the things that could go wrong at any point in the election. Um, and tabletopping and communicating with the other counties really helps you understand where the weak points are with their relationship with their local sheriff's, apart sheriff's department um, and uh, their, their police, et cetera. Um, so we need to do some more drilling to make sure that um, everybody's confident in their physical in their physical space. Um, the legislature passed, um, I think, some reasonable bills um, to uh, make it a crime um, to uh, threaten election officials. Um, we don't want to create a whole lot of new crimes, but we do want to be able to hold people accountable. Um, yeah, so that's what I've got to say about that. Okay. We're okay. getting, oh, go ahead, Mike, real quick, because I. Oh, well, I was just saying thank you. Oh, yes, no, that's fine. <laughs> Mike had a real quick question, then we need to wrap this up. Um, I'd like Steve each, Hobbs has some place to go at three, I guess. So I'd like each candidate to tell us in which quartile, bottom through top quartile, would you place your opponent in terms of the job they're doing right now? Julie, you can go first. Okay. I am completely confident that um, Secretary Hobbs will uphold the law and the Constitution and do the right thing in a dramatic moment. I know, I know that he will do that. However, I do think that he is in the bottom quartile for his role as Secretary of State. The communication with the counties has been uh, sparse. It's been top down. It hasn't been collaborative. If you have interacted with the division of corporations and charitable filings, it had a recent software upgrade has been uh, miserably managed where we have organizations that are being administratively dissolved without knowing about it, which is impacting their ability to defend themselves in court, apply for insurance, or even apply for funding for financing. Um, so the uh, administrative part has been something that's been a disappointment to me, and it 
uh, gives me no pleasure to say this because I do think that uh, he is a very honorable person um, and will do the right thing in a crisis. But the lack of administrative experience and partnerships with local government does show. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, thanks for the shade there, but I understand it's a campaign. <laughs> so look, I, I think Julie's uh, done a good job, but again, I'm gonna, look, I'm not gonna spend this time attacking Julie or well, I'm just not gonna do that here, but I will say that, look, um, I've been in this job for almost a year now and it's we've had no problems. Uh, we've actually had many communications with 39 counties because we have meetings with 39 counties almost on a monthly basis. And during elections, we have it on a weekly basis. And Julie knows this and we communicate it all the time. We also shepherd a lot of legislation that the auditors wanted and we were successful in passing several of the bills that they wanted. So there's no top down here. Um, being in the military doesn't mean we all run everything top down you still have to listen to your ncos and your your junior officers that's the way it works i i don't command by, by dictatorship i've never done that in my years of service i i have a lot of administrative and leadership capability because I've, I've done it in the military and I, I you know that's not how i operate as secretary of state and in terms of the corporations and upgrading the software, well, I mean, we need the money from the legislature to do that. And it's a slow process because it is a very old system um, along. And that's not the only system that we have that has been neglected because of years of not having the budgetary support that we have. So look, I think, um, I think, yeah, like I said, I think Julie's doing a good job as county auditor, but this job is different. It has evolved. We have outside threats. Uh, Homeland Security approaches every Secretary of State with a security clearance. I already have a security clearance. And I've already dealt with this, not just in my role as Secretary of State, but outside my role as Secretary of State, uh, dealing with those threats. And look, if, if the horse is taking you where you need to go, and the horse is strong and looks like the horse is going to improve, then why would you change horses? Okay, thank you. I am going to wrap this up because um, I uh, made a promise that we would be done. <laughs> so Mr. Hobbs, you'd be somewhere by three. So, so anyway, Julie, I'm going to let you go first. You can um, have two minutes to wrap up and um, I'll just start timing you when um, whenever you get going. But thank you both for participating today. This has been very insightful and I know how busy you both are. So we really appreciate you for running and for taking the time to talk to us today. So, all right, Julie. Well, I will, say, I will say that there is a longer story behind the Corporations and Charitable Filing Division. And it's not just um, old, old software. It's how you manage the re-platform and the software development with an eye towards the impact towards customers. Um, and that would have been managed differently under me. Um, polarization is very high and trust in government is low. Um, that's why I'm running as a nonpartisan candidate with experience. You get experience without political party strings attached. I'm prepared and ready for this job and have the trust and support of Democrats, Republicans, independents, and election professionals who know me and trust me. Um, I am looking forward to increasing access to democracy through innovative solutions like points of assistance, expanded language access, modernizing our system to find solutions and alternatives to signature verification, for example. I'm looking forward to increasing transparency and security through nonpartisan observer core, through penetration testing through getting 39 counties to do hash checks of their software before they begin counting ballots and before certification. I've got many other examples on my website. Um, and I'm looking forward to administering in a nonpartisan way and really creating a new day for this office where you can have experience and you can have a professional without the political strings attached. I wanna thank you for your time today and I encourage you to, um, to research and thank you for the thoughtful questions. That was very nice. All right, okay. 
Whenever you're ready, Steve, go for it. Sure. Well, first I want to thank you and I want to thank Julie for running for office. It's not easy. It can be grueling, but don't worry, Julie, it's only 35 days left. Uh, but I also want to stress the importance of this office. It's not enough to manage the office and assisting our 39 counties in elections like I've already done. But because of January 6th and threats to our office from malign actors here and overseas, we need to have someone who has the experience and background to fight those threats to our democracy. I've done it for real in Kosovo and Iraq, and I've done it for real here as your Secretary of State over the year. Lastly, isn't it time to have someone in this office who represents communities who feel underrepresented and underappreciated? As son of an Asian immigrant and a father to a special needs child, we need someone who can speak for them. I'm already talking to your local Hispanic Chamber of Commerce about just that. I'm proud of my history of the bi of bipartisanship, which has not only earned me endorsements across the aisle, but trust in those elected officials that will be needed to get bills passed and budget passed. There is more to this office than elections, and already we are starting plans to have satellite offices across the state to help those who want to start a small business or a nonprofit have that face-to-face -face interaction, the help that they need instead of driving to Olympia or having a frustrated phone call. I've been developing a program to use our libraries in our state institutions as another means of rehabilitation and another in another program with rural communities, libraries and our own and our own tabletop gaming industry to develop safe libraries and safe kids program to create great game libraries so that our kids have a safe place to go and have fun. I want to thank you for listening to me and I hope I can earn your vote. Uh, thank you. Thank you both. It was, it was wonderful to have you here today. Appreciate it.